Hey everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another presentation, Herpes simplex virus, which is cold sore, HSV1. My name is Pramil Chariat. I'm a program director, internal medicine residency, transnational residency. I teach medical students and residents. So introduction, herpes simplex virus, what is the, is it belongs to a family, a human herpes viridae family. It's also known as cold sore, HHV1, fever bluster, herpes labialis, herpetic gingivostomatitis, herpetic stomatitis, cranker sore. It's an envelope, double-stranded DNA virus. And then um, it had like four structural components, like uh, there's a core, there's a capsid, tegument, and envelope. The core consists of the single, that's where the single nuclear DS DNA in the form of a torus. And then you have a capsid surrounding the core, and then you got tegment between the capsid and the envelope. In a, it's an amorphous, sometimes asymmetrical feature, um, and it consists of viral enzymes, some of which are needed to take control of the cell's chemical uh, process, okay? And then you have the envelope, the outer layer of the virion. It comes of a vaulted host membrane and a dozen unique viral glycoproteins. Now epidemiology, 67% of the world population, a huge number, right? 67, uh, almost one third, I mean two third of the uh, population can have uh, this disease. It's a very contagious infection and um, acquired during childhood maybe like a lot of time. Infection is lifelong, vast majority of HSV infection are like oral herpes, infection around the mouth, cold sore, and recurrent episodes can happen in, because it can stay dormant as we know. Recurrence usually like less than two episodes per year is around five to 10%, and some people experience like more than six episodes per year. If you look at the pathophysiology, we've got a nice diagram over here. Now, herpes simplex virus invade the and replicate in neurons in the sensory and autonomic ganglia, epidermal and dermal cells, and the virus travel from the skin during contact to sensory dorsal root ganglion, establish chronic latency. That's why it can appear again and again with the trigeminal ganglion. And then oral HC infection reactivate from trigeminal sensory ganglia and descend along accent to affect facial, oral, labial, oropharyngeal, and ocular mucosa. Primary infection appears two to 20 days and evolves through the vesicle formation, postulation, ulceration, and finally scabbing. And the peak viral titer occurs in 24 to 48 hours after the onset of the lesion. Now, what is it transmitted? Oral to oral contact, and um, it can contact with, I mean, in the saliva and surface around the mouth. It can be transmitted to the genital area through oral genital contact, and can be transferred from oral to skin surface that appear normal when there's no symptoms present. However, it's greatest risk of transmission when there are active sores. Remember that. So, signs and symptoms of uh, cold sore or uh, herpes simplex 1, oral herpes infection mostly remains asymptomatic and symptoms of oral herpes include painful blusters or open sores called ulcers around the mouth and um, usually people call it a cold sore. The infected person will experience tingling, itching, burning sensation around the mouth and then before the sores they usually kind of complain about there's numbness, tingling then the source appear, okay? After the initial infection, you have the blisters, and then finally, um, it will go away. I mean, it, it can take sense. Genital herpes caused by being kind of asymptomatic and have mild symptoms. Final, usually, have the scabbing can be seen in the final lesion. Um, now, diagnosis, diagnosis based mainly history and physical examination. You don't have to do expensive tests, but are there tests available? Um, uh, there should be like, I mean, you can do a definite diagnosis like viral culture, polymerase chain reaction, SANG, smear, immunofluorescence, antibody staining. But it's good to know what are the tests, what's the sensitivity and specificity of it, so we're going to talk about it. So SANG tests allow for rapid diagnosis, staining of the specimen from early viral vesicle, persons of multinucleate epithelial giants or so microscope and consists with the herpes HSV infection. You got the sensitivity of 80%, specificity of 90%. Just for examination purpose, you need to know. This is a ta SANG test, okay? And then you can do viral cultures, the standard sensitivity is around 50% and specificity 100%. You got a PCR with the high sensitivity and specificity from in the 90s to 95 range. Now, treatment, uh, mainly thing provide education, how, the, you know, how does it spread and all that. Many patients do self-limited, that's the word, you know, most of the body takes the time. It's very inconvenient for the patient. It's a cosmetic problem. And antiviral medication like acyclovir, famiclovir, and valcyclovir, most effective treatment. So antiviral medication, reduce the duration by like one day, okay? That is a big difference. You can do a cyclovir, the dose given 400 milligram orally five times, uh, five 
times daily for five days and then you can valcyclovir two gram orally every 12 hours for one day and the patient counseling always cons <clears throat> uh, counsel the patient uh, you know what exactly herpes simplex of course sore and then how does it transmit like kissing initial stages and education about contagious nature it's all of this important okay um, and the topical treatment you can also use a cyclovir five percent came Pen, mm, pencyclovir, one person cream also can be used topical treatment and there's some uh, uh, alternative medicines are also available which we'll be talking about in the next presentation. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon. Thank you.